DARPA launched the first version of the MAGO in 2007. It was a niche performance shoe designed by longtime shoe designer Heinz Marietter that introduced a novel X-REN system for foot support. Today we are going to give you an in-depth review of SC ARPA MAGO. So, let's begin. Banana-shaped and radically down camber, the MAGO is built for specific usage, grabbing, hooking, scumming, and towing in on the steeds. It has a fiberglass shank, the toe power support, or TPS, insert under the toe box for a dash of edging stability. This feature has stayed through the shoe's second and now third iterations. I climbed in all of them. I still have my original pair and break them out occasionally for bouldering and radically overhanging climbs. And I love the second version, which came out in 2018. I punished them on a project at the Dungeon, a 30-degree overhanging swell of granite in South Platte, Colorado. But they were also precise and versatile enough for a thin, vertical face climbing. Before we get to the testing, a few notes, via Scarpa, on important updates. The Mago's patterning, materials, and rubber placement are all different The shoes designed to be more flexible, malleable, and perform better. For example, the x ran on the medial side now has three perforations in the front of the shoe and three perforations along the arch for stretch. The upper now uses dual-layer perforated microsuede to improve the shoe's dynamic properties. The previous microsuede upper was not perforated. The toe scumming patch now has full M50 rubber, Scarpa softest compound. The heel has three significant updates. One, it's been redesigned with soft spine heel construction, a thin eye beam of rubber that runs the entire length of the heel, paired with thinner, perforated rubber on the sides. Two, a soft touch fabric heel pocket provides a soft feel inside and increases footbed friction for hooking and fed. Three, pressure absorbing fed, PF technology also found on other Scarpa models uses softer material between the two rubber ends on the Achilles to reduce pressure on the tendon. The new perforated tongue is more breathable and comfortable. The big toe pocket lining is Alcantara leather, a soft, velvety material used on the Fury Air and Boostic to improve footbed grip. The outsole is 3.5 mm excess grip 2 versus the stiffer excess edge used on the previous version. One thing that has not changed but is worth noting, and is crucial to the Mago's performance is the TPS, toe power support insert. This is a small, specially shaped fiberglass underfoot insert under the forefoot. It provides minimal but focused support, keeping the shoe flexible but supporting when you have to stand on your feet. This allows the Mago to have a powerful toe for standing on tiny holds, but not at the expense of underfoot flexibility and the ability to grab at features on steep terrain. I've been testing in two different sizes, 42 and 41.5. I'm a street shoe size 10 and typically wear 41 in La Sportiva and Scarpa, the Instinct line. But for the more asymmetrical Magos, Boosters, and Boostics, I hover between 41.5 and 42. I have wide, high-volume feet, so banana shoes like the Magos don't usually work at 41. There's way too much torque on my feet. Out of the box, I noticed with both sizes how comfortable the footbed was for such a high-octane shoe. This meant fewer I need to whip these off the minute I hit the chain's panic moments. The interior was surprisingly supple, like sinking into a plush leather seat in a Ferrari when expecting a plastic bucket seat. The microfiber, synthetic leather was cushiony, and the heel cup didn't pinch. Also, the stitching between panels was so tight and refined that I never felt it underfoot. My friend Bo, who had just bought a pair, said, The Mago's build feels super deluxe and plush and fits like a kid glove. At both sizes 42 and 41.5, I got that reassuring whooshing sound when putting them on a bespoke fit. I primarily been using the 42s for comfort, but even at this more forgiving size, there was still play in the laces to crank the fit down for red pines. But then I keep it loser for bouldering in on sides. That said, for max red point precision and to get my big toe over the TPS insert, I sized down. Not so far my heel couldn't drop into the heel pocket, though. I didn't want baggy spot, especially with the Mago softer, more flexible redesign, which relied on skin-to-shoe contact. Overhanging rock forces different movement than vertical terrain. Instead of keeping my feet under me, driving through my toes to tick tack up, I often look to use my feet like a tail. I kick them out to the sides to find the most significant foothold possible in whatever wacky configuration, and traction my hips into the wall. 
This is something the new Mago did brilliantly and for which they are built with their radical asymmetry. Because of that banana curve, I could place my foot well to the side, as high as my flexibility allowed, and still power through the big toe. I repeatedly confirmed this on Uber Steep Granite around the front range of Colorado. On a KV, crack it lead that route at my friend's secret crag, I could post up on Smears way out to the side and lock in. Ditto on the 5.13 The Event Horizon in Staunton State Park. With its strange, traversing crocs involving hooks, edging, and smears to cross a polished lithic wave. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe this channel. And leave your comment in the comment section below. What do you think about this particular model?